All right, let's call to order today's meeting of the Santa Cruz Metropolitan Transit District Board of Directors uh, with roll call vote, please. Uh, Director Brown. Present. Director Downey. Present. Director Dutra. Here. And Director Colin Terry Johnson will be absent today. Director Koenig. Here. Director Lynn. Here. Director McPherson. Here. Director Myers. Present. Director Pegler. Here. Director Parker. Here. Director Rockin. Here. Director Ex Officio Henderson. Don't see him. Uh, and Director Ex Officio Northcutt. Here. And we have quorum. Thank you very much. Well, in announcements, I want to note that today's meeting is being broadcast by Community Television of Santa Cruz County. I'll also add that it's Earth Day and uh, Metro is providing free fare service around the county and also including Highway 17 Express, right, and Paracruz. So hope people will enjoy that and take advantage and think about Earth Day today. Um, comments from the Board of Directors, item four. Um. Uh, Chairman uh, Pegler, um, I, I, um, I just attended the two-day legislative conference of the California State Association of Counties, and just in general, very in-depth, but what the, the focus on everything was uh, housing homeless and, and a lot of tie-in to transportation, of course, and how we can get people near transit corridors and so forth. Um, so that's uh, a very strong directive uh, from the state level to each and every one of our 58 counties. Uh, very good conference um, and uh, got a lot of work to do and the state's trying to get on board to, to really be in a leadership role. I'd say one of the things is that was concerned to the representatives of some of the counties was that, uh, you know, include some flexibility because all counties don't have the same exact needs and so forth, uh, rural versus urban, for instance, and so forth and transportation. But Anyway, very good conference and uh, transportation was at the top of the list of the discussions. That's great. That's great. Glad you were there, Director McPherson. Appreciate the report. Director Myers, I see your hand. Yeah, I just wanted to let the board know that the city of Santa Cruz is beginning to operationalize our recently adopted homeless management program. Part of that is um, beginning to move folks um, out of some of the um, uh, homeless encampments that are primarily unmanaged or, you know, have sprung up in various areas. Um, I know the Metro facility has had a significant group of folks who have been back, uh, you know, living along the river there. We were able to work with those individuals and have put, uh, you know, have helped them get into at minimum um, the, for at least in the interim step into the um, San Lorenzo Benchlands. However, that camp um, will be slowly closed over the next few months and we'll be placing folks in um, managed encampments with services uh, and those are being located uh, in various locations uh, around the city and up at the armory but I did want to let the board know that we did, um, we were able to go in and, and ask those individuals to find other sources of places to be, as well as go in and clean up that area behind the metro uh, facilities, which um, I think we took out about 20,000 pounds of trash uh, from back there. We've also closed the camps across the river and also along Hell's, Hell's Trail, as we call it, where it's been named, and those areas are now officially off limits. If folks do try to bring encampments back into those areas, they will be contacted to remove their items and move them to the appropriate shelters or other facilities that were standing up. So just want to let the board know that that did occur last month. Director Rod, can you have a question? I just wanted to follow up on uh, Donna's comment. People need to understand that there are three different levels of um, uh, different types of camping. Um, one of them is unsanctioned. That's where people just put up a tent anywhere. And that's been a problem in neighborhoods and next to the river, behind, including behind the uh, transit district facility, operations facility. Um, the second of which is uh, places where camping is sanctioned, but not managed. And that's the, um, down in the uh, bench lands, 
it, it's a it's a mess there. It, you know, it, it, on the other hand, we have to find some place for people to go temporarily, and the city committed that they'll move them out of or they are to other better places um, by the uh, by July. And then the third are these actually managed campgrounds, and there's a real difference between the sanctioned but not not managed campgrounds. A lot of people confuse those because they're going to try and set up um, 20 uh, managed campgrounds all around the county, um, and there'll there'll be nothing like what's going on in the benchlands. More like the one that's at uh, 1220 River Street, where the actually you know stuff is really neat and clean, and people are getting help and services of a variety of kinds to actually get them out of homelessness. And so it's important that people not confuse. The, what's the, what we're looking for in those 20 campsites with the, the still a, quite a mess down there at the at the bench lands, but still better than having people camping down in the river where there are environmental and um, uh, serious social problems where there's no management whatsoever. Thank you. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, Mike. Yeah, the, the really the the model of the unmanaged but sanctioned areas is slowly going to be sort of. Uh, not a part of any system um, that we think is sustainable and we're moving more towards these uh, various located areas where we can establish people but with um, with a service provision with an agreement with the um, with the folk person who's taking the, the spot um, that they're active and seeking housing, um, you know, seeking seeking employment, doing the doing the things that you know we need to do with regards to case management to help the individuals, and we'll be um, standing up with an additional seventy beds up at the Armory um, this coming month, and then you'll slowly start to see uh, the transition from some of the individuals there at the Benchlands as the final step. So. But just want to let everybody know that that did occur and we've got a clean area behind the metro facilities now. Thank you for that update, Director Myers. Director Northcutt, I see your hand. Oh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to give a couple of updates at Cabrillo uh, and happy Earth Day. We are hosting a pop-up event for student galleries tomorrow. But one of the, and I missed you all last month, I was out for spring break with Cabrillo and I took it off <laughs> all the way. Um, we are, um, our students are starting to discuss a electronic bus pass, and we're looking forward to bringing that um, to your attention in the coming months. We are hosting our student senate elections this week, next week, and voting will happen the week of the second, and then after that we'll have a new student body, and they'll be talking about more eco-friendly um, the goal is to have more eco-friendly um, things happening for students at Cabrillo as it relates to our commuter school. So uh, UC Santa Cruz and CSUMB, those connections and building those bridges. And one of those things is a, a, a mobile app or eco pass for us that is not the physical student ID card. So more to come on that and just wanted to bring it to your attention. Thanks. Very good. Thank you. Any other comments from that are funded from that source, the 2016 Measure D funds? And on uh, Wednesday the 20th, the RTC gave approval for those existing decals to be covered up until following the election. And our staff have been working on this for a number of weeks. If Danielle would care to describe uh, some of her efforts, and I think Donna Bauer may have some images that we could share of the uh, the sticker that will be placed over these. Danielle, could you speak to this? Yeah, of course. So what we decided to do is temporarily cover up the Measure D stickers uh, with a dump the pump messaging. And it's gonna be easily to remove after the, the June uh, ballot. Um, so those are being installed right now. They should be done uh, on all of our vehicles by Monday and that's for fixed route and paracruise. Um, at that time, we shouldn't have any other Measure D mentions on our vehicles. Instead, we'll just talk to the 2016 Measure D on our website and landing page. Um, that way we can still support our obligations to the RTC. Very good. We do have some photos if we're able to share those. But. Uh, I have one up on my computer. If I might be able to share. There we go. Thank you, Donna. That's so, perfect. So there is the new sticker and it's uh, comparative size to the existing Measure D uh, Moving Santa Cruz County Forward stickers. 
And I think the next photo will show how we can place those over during the next two months. Again, Larry, you maybe didn't make this explicit, but the problem is that there's a measure D on the June 7th ballot and people are conflating or confusing yes. the measure D, which we all love and appreciate deeply for the funding it provides for Metro and other services with the, the uh, controversial matter that's on the ballot that people, whatever their views are, um, we don't want to make it sound like we have a partisan view on the upcoming election. We're really, that's why we want to cover these over until the election is right. over. Thank you, Mike. And uh, I will offer that I believe all the jurisdictions that receive Measure D funding uh, were notified of the, the same opportunity to cover these decals if they wish. And uh, I appreciate staff's work on this particular approach. I thought it was a very smart way to uh, avoid appearances of uh, support or confusion to voters. So thank you for that. Uh, to the public, I am looking and see, I don't see any hands at the moment of anyone from the public who care to comment. Give it a moment. Well, seeing none, let's move on to uh, labor organization and communications. Anything from our representatives today? Uh, I see James Sandoval. Would you please raise your hand and there you are. Thank you, James. Proceed if you'd like. I'll let James speak. Morning, Board of Directors. There you are. Yeah. Good morning. I think there's a delay every time I raise my hand <laughs> so sorry about that all right um i just um i'm sure you all know by now um on april 7th we uh ratified the uh contract extension for one year so i'm happy to announce that our members are happy and um we're um, looking forward to a smooth transition with the new ceo i'm happy to report that he did meet with um all the uh, union leaders I can't remember the exact date, and thank you, Don Cremay, for setting that up. We had a great meeting with them. Uh, we talked about a lot of important ideas, goals, and ambitions, and uh, it's looking like we got a, a pretty good days ahead of us. So I just I just want to report that and say we're grateful, we're excited, and um, we're looking forward to seeing what Metro is going to be look in in the future. Thank you. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, we're on to the Metro Advisory Committee written communications. Have we received anything from Mac? None. There are none. Okay, and I believe there were no additional documentations. Correct. Correct. All right, we are on to the consent agenda. Are there any comments from public on any items in the consent agenda? Seeing none. Do board, board members have anything? I'll move move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We I have a motion it. and a second. That was Rotkin and Dutra, I believe. Or Conan. Uh, Sorry. No worries. Thank you. I have many boxes today. Thank you. All right. May we vote on that, please? Director Brown. Aye. Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Myers? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Yes. Director and Director Rockton? Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you very much. With that, we move to the regular agenda and item 10. Um, request to approve the fiscal year 22 FTA funds. Uh, we have a report from John Ergo in planning. John, would you like to take this please? Yes, good morning directors, John Ergo, Director of Planning and Development. Uh, so this item is a request to use FY22 FTA 5307 funds towards future bus purchases. Um, and we also uh, presented an update on the long range bus replacement plan. So for those of you who, who remember and were on the board in FY 18, 2017, 
Uh, at that time, Metro was facing 63 buses, over 50% of the fleet that was beyond its useful life, uh, which is typically about 14 years for a bus. And at that time, uh, Metro and the board established a bus replacement plan uh, to figure out how to tackle that issue with the primary component of the plan being the establishment of a bus replacement fund, which was a $3 million set aside, uh, primarily funded by Measure D, uh, Senate Bill 1 and Road Repair, and Senate Bill 1, the Road Repair and Accountability Act of 2017. And this, uh, you know, Metro always knew wasn't going to be enough uh, to make a huge dent, uh, but that $3 million was used as seed money and match and local match for uh, competitive and formula grants. And as a result of those efforts, uh, entering 2022, uh, Metro had reduced the number of buses beyond its useful life to 17, uh, which was a huge uh, reduction. However, um, we're about to see a coming wave of uh, buses reaching their useful life. And so by the end of FY23, we expect the number to jump back up to 30, oh, the number will jump back up to 35. And by FY28, uh, it'll reach 61. Um, to complicate things or to make things more expensive, I should say, because of the uh, CARB's Innovative Clean Transit Regulation, future bus purchases will be more expensive, frankly, as, as we transition to zero emission uh, technology in the future. And so staff is recommending that this year uh, we use, we commit FY22 uh, 5307 funding, which Metro normally uses for operations uh, expenses, but is eligible for capital that we commit that towards uh, funding the bus replacement fund uh, this fiscal year. We're not committing today towards any uh, explicit purchases or even technology, whether it's CNG replacements, electric or hydrogen, we'll bring those requests back to the board in the future. Um, but this is, a, this is a request to commit, again, these 5307 funds towards uh, bus purchases. And I'd be happy to, to take any questions if there are on this item. I see Director Rothkin's hand. Hi, again, I have a brief comment. Uh, first of all, it used to be that the federal government defined the useful life of a bus as 12 years. Under the Trump administration, they moved it to 14, not because of any changes in technology, but just because it meant that they, you have to force to keep your buses longer. And uh, that, of course, increases your maintenance costs and uh, problems, and breakdowns on the road and so forth. But maybe more importantly, I assume other directors get the same emails I do from members of the public that ask, why are you buying anything other than electric buses? I mean, you're buying some CNG buses. And the reason is, uh, <clears throat> staff will correct me if I got the numbers wrong, but in, uh, a CNG bus costs something like $700,000 each, which is a staggering number for lay people like myself. Um, but, but an electric bus costs something like $1.2 million each. And we don't have the money to simply buy all electric buses or we'd have to actually cut back our service on the road. And so what we have is a plan that moves more and more towards electric and will meet the state guidelines for being completely electric before their deadline. Uh, I, not right at the deadline, but before it. Um, but it's a way to keep us operating while we're moving there and stuff, but eventually end up with the electric buses we need. We just, we simply can't afford to just, you know, only buy electric buses or we'd be in a position where we'd have to start cutting routes because we wouldn't have buses to service our existing routes. So I think it's a reasonable plan. We're doing our best to you know, comply with it and ultimately comes down to the economics of it. It's, if we had the money, we would buy all electric buses. We just don't have that kind of funding. Thank you, Director McPherson. Bruce, you're still muted. Uh, the amount, you didn't mention the exact amount from committed 50 or 5307. What's the exact amount just for the public to know? It's $11 million. $11 million, okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none from the board, is there any comment from the public? I see no hands. the staff recommendation. Second. Motion Rotkin, second McPherson. And we have a roll call vote. Director Brown. Aye. Director Downing. Aye. Director Dutra. Aye. 
Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Myers? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Yes. And Director Rockin? Aye. And the motion passes. Very good. Thank you. Next item, number 11, consideration of issuing a formal request for proposals for the South County Zero Emissions Facility. Uh, that is with Wanda Moon. I'm gonna <clears throat> take this one too. Okay, thank you, John. Planning and Development Director, since I already have the mic. Uh, so somewhat related to the previous item, this, and here we're asking that the board uh, consider authorization Authorizing the purchasing manager to issue a formal request for proposals for the South County Zero Emissions Operating and Maintenance Facility uh, Phase 1 planning project. As mentioned in the previous item, in December 2018, the California Air Resources Board adopted the Innovative Clean Transit Regulation, which mandates starting in 2026, an escalating percentage, it's 25% in 2026, and 100% starting in 2028 of future bus procurements being zero emission. The initial planning that Metro has done, uh, and that's included in our CARB ICT rollout plan, indicates that our existing uh, facility at JKS is just simply not big enough to accommodate uh, future zero emission bus buses and charging or fueling technology. What this plan attempts to do is to uh, look for sites in South County for a potential uh, South County zero emission operating and maintenance facilities so that we can meet the, uh, fully meet the CARB ICT regulation. So we're requesting with this a, a million dollars to conduct this planning study, um, to develop, uh, to identify potential sites, uh, conduct environmental clearance and conceptual uh, and preliminary design um, so that we can then be in a, a excellent position to pursue uh, federal grant funding uh, for construction and, or design and, and final construction. Uh, that, that concludes my presentation. I get Very it. Good. Okay. Questions from the board? Jimmy, Director Dutra, please speak. You can call me Jimmy, it's fine. <laughs> I like director. Thanks. <laughs> Um, you know, I, I really, I'm really supportive of this. Uh, I think that a lot of times we um, we have big grand ideas and we don't really ever push forward with them. So I think this is really an opportunity to um, capitalize on the um, the grant funding that we could get for this facility, which um, we are primed to um, to receive. If and. So, um, and it'd be nice to have this facility down in, in South County and continue moving forward with an environmentally um, positive fleet for um, Metro. So um, I would be very supportive of this and would love to make a motion to pass it. I'll second the motion. Here we have a motion from Director Dutra, second from Myers. Other questions or comments? Yes, the public. Uh, we're about to go there. Uh, public, uh, I'm looking to see. I see no hands from our public. I think we're ready for another roll call vote. We're rolling through this meeting, aren't we? Don't jinx it. <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to. All right, Donna, let's roll call. Uh, Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Myers? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Yes. And Director Rockin? Aye. And the motion passes. Very good. All right, item 12, uh, request to fund HR analyst position and defund benefits. This is from Dawn, I believe. Take it away. Good morning, everyone. Don Creme, HR Director, um, and I'm here to talk to you about uh, funding an additional HR analyst. Um, it's not an extra position. Uh, my benefits technician um, has resigned and accepted employment um, that she's really excited about uh, at another agency, which we're sad about, but 
Um, so she's uh, left us this week. And so what I've done, what I want to do is defund the benefits technician position and fund another HR analyst position. And then that position would focus, their main focus would be on benefits. So um, this is the same thing I did with my last position. And the reason is to get more of a generalized position that can help out in each area. So recruitment, compensation, benefits. Um, and so that's, that's what I'm doing here with this, this position. Again, not an additional position. I'd be defunding the benefits technician position and moving the funding over to the HR analyst position. That is it in a nutshell, and I can answer any questions if you have any. Questions from the board? Are, are there comp what are the co comparable costs? Is the new position more expensive than the other? I assume it will be a little more expensive because if you're looking for general uh, focus. Yes, it, it is a little bit of a higher paying position. Um, so there would be a, a, a bit more cost. Um, and I can get that for you. Uh, 13.8 increase, 13.8 thousand increase in FY23. Um, and that's assuming that we hire somebody in at a step one. So that would be the additional for next year. For this year, it's actually a savings because the year is almost over. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Do we have a motion or a uh, motion forward? I would move and I, I appreciate that. Uh, creative thinking, and I think right now with everything you're dealing with, having someone more general is going to be helpful, and especially with uh, the hiring and recruitment and everything that you're involved with right now. So Definitely. sounds like a good plan, and I move approval. Second. All right, we had a motion from Director Lind, I believe a second from McPherson. Yes. Thank you. Donna? All right, Director Brown? Aye. Director Downing? Aye. Director Dutra? Aye. Director Koenig? Aye. Director Lynn? Aye. Director McPherson? Aye. Director Myers? Aye. Director Pegler? Aye. Director Parker? Yes. And Director Rockin? Aye. And the motion passes. Thank you all. Thank you. That brings us to the CEO's oral report. Don, give us the news. <laughs> Good morning. Hello again, Don Creme, this time interim CEO. Um, this is my my um, my last day of my of my C interim CEO uh, reign. Um, as you know, uh, Mr. Michael Tree will be starting on Monday. We're all super excited about it. Um, ran into some people here at Calac that actually came up to me to let me know how great of a guy he was and how excited I should be and and all of that. So that was really nice to hear. Um, and, um, yeah, so I enjoyed my reign, um, uh -huh. first, first woman CEO in history at Santa Cruz Metro. So it was really nice to hold that even though it was interim. Um, so thank you all for your support. It, it meant a lot to me and, um, yeah, so, um, moving along, uh, we also have some new hire, uh, additional new hires coming on that I'd like to announce, uh, that actually started last, last month. So we've got, Elizabeth Rocha Rocha, and she's our new administrative specialist reporting uh, into Donna Bauer. She started with us on March 28th. We've got uh, Mike Montez who promoted uh, to a lead, a lead parts and materials clerk from a parts and materials clerk. So he promoted on April 8th. And then we've also got uh, Mariano Bernal. He was previously in a provisional position for us doing IT support and he actually was um, chosen for the provisional uh, information technology project coordinator uh, to help with our EA, EAP, uh, ERP project over the next couple of years. We've got a new hire in HR. Her name is Amidia Frederick. Um, she's our new HR analyst and she started on the 18th. We've also got a new parts and materials clerk, Jesse Diaz, who started on April 18th. And then Renee Lopez, facilities maintenance worker two, who started on the 18th. So congratulations to all of our new hires and our promotion. That's that's awesome. We love to see that. Um, wanted to give uh, just some updates of, of what's going on. So uh, Santa Cruz County leadership started back um, a week or two ago, I believe. I don't know the exact date, but they started back up. Um, so 
if you remember, they were uh, in the middle of class 35 um, when COVID hit. So then everything got shut down and they, they I think they were only able to attend two of their classes. Um, so they've started back up and that's wonderful. If, if um, any of you on, on here have attended that program, it's, it's great. I did that uh, class 34, I think it's the best class. Um, and so it just takes you all over Santa Cruz County and you just learn everything. And if so, if you're not a native of Santa Cruz County and don't know a whole lot about it, going through that program is, is really wonderful. Um, Metro is involved because we provide the buses for I think three of those field trips. And so um, with that, we have um, a two or three of our employees that get to attend that, um, that every, every year that they run it. So that's really nice. Um, uh, as it was mentioned earlier, today is Earth Day. Um, we are uh, offering free rides in conjunction with Earth Day. Uh, we are also setting up a booth today at noon at the um, Metro Transit Center, uh, just to hand out some information and, and uh, see if we can get some traffic there and get, get the word out for Earth Day. Um, we do have a new tenant in our Watsonville Transit Center, um, Global Roasting, Global Roasting Coffee. Um, they serve iced coffee and um, coffee beans, and they uh, mostly serve to the police officers down there. But now they're now they're located in our in our transit center, so please stop by and grab some coffee. Um, we do have a bus operator class starting on the twenty fifth, um, and I believe we have six operators starting. I could be is it six? Okay, that's I thought I wasn't sure if it's five, but I, I believe it's six. Um, so we're excited about that and everybody just keep their fingers crossed that I can report out or that Michael can report out later on that we had six graduates from that class. Um, I was really excited to, to announce today that we had no COVID, um, no COVID positive, but every time I do that, I jinx myself. And so we've had one um, positive um, for COVID in the last 30 days, which is still amazing. Um, so we're, we're doing great there. Um, as you know, uh, the mask mandate was lifted as of 419, and so we have um, changed our signage to um, recommended. You know, we are still recommending that people wear masks, and we're still requiring it for unvaccinated folks. Um, the last thing I want to give an update on is SB 957. Um, so if you, as you remember, the board uh, gave direction to staff last month to agenda size this at a later time, which was in June uh, when our new CEO uh, was here. However, um, uh, the Senator, the legislation is moving forward. It's, it's moving forward faster than any of us expected. So um, there was a, um, there will be a hearing on March 26th um, in, stand, in the Senate Standing Committee on Judiciary. Um, as you know, Metro management does oppose this bill, um, but it is moving forward before we are able to get it on the agenda. Um, and and once once we are under that um, um, the perp jurisdiction, there is there is no going back out of that. So, just want to give you an update that 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 is moving forward. Um, and I can that's all I have for today. And I can answer any questions on any of that stuff that I rambled really fast through. <laughs> I see hands up, but I don't. Do I call on them or Larry? I, I'm sorry. I just had an, I had an internet blip. I went okay. off for about five seconds. Uh, Director McPherson. Yeah, I just want to thank you for the report, Don, and I just want to say thank you for an extraordinary, extraordinarily done, well done job in the interim. Uh, and there's some uh, challenging circumstances that we that you uh, you were in with our CEO leaving and so forth. You did a fantastic job, and it's much appreciated. Uh, really, it's uh, you, st you steered the ship right in the right direction. So, thank you very much for everything you've done. It's much appreciated. Thank you. That means so much. Thanks so much. You're here, Director Lynn. Oh, you're muted, Donna. Thank you. There you I are. wanted to uh, uh, share my appreciation as well. I totally agree, Don. You've just done an outstanding job and. Um, I worried when some of the challenges were happening that you were going to uh, uh, step aside and say never mind. But you, you know, you, uh, you know, you hung in there and you really did handle everything just and communicated so well with all of us. It was just a pleasure to work with you and um, and really cool to know you're the first female CEO in Metro. Congratulations. 
Thank you. <laughs> so, and I also had noticed and wanted to acknowledge, I appreciate Michael Tree uh, being here part of, and on, uh, even before he's, his first day, he's been meeting with the unions. I know you've shared that he's been uh, doing very, very proactive and that uh, just adds to our confidence and appreciate your coordinating with him and your work in that too. So thanks so much. Thank you. Director Jimmy. I just want to say thank you, Don, for um, stepping in. You know, I, you did a great job. Okay, your face just moved somewhere else. Okay, there it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you did a great job, and um, you're so thorough, and you really gave detailed reports. I really appreciate that, and I just got to know you a little bit um, more in person because we haven't ever met in person, mm -hmm. and um, it was nice to meet you um, at our, um, I guess, executive uh, pre-agenda meeting, mm -hmm. and. Um, so good, I, I, you're such a, you're a good asset to our organization and you'll be around and who knows, one day you may be back as the CEO. Yeah, yeah, no, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Director thank Myers. You. I just wanna say thanks to Dawn. Um, just, um, it was a quick transition. And so I'm really, really uh, thankful that you stepped up and, uh, you know, helped us guide us through some complicated things. And so just wanna say thank you. and. Congratulations on going back to your real job. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, just, just to kind of, um, you know, again, I could not do it with with every without everyone on staff. There's there's absolutely no way I would have been successful at all. Um, everyone, the planning department, marketing, IT, um, finance, ev just everybody. Any time that I didn't know the answer, I could go to somebody. Uh, operations, you know, I go go and ask, hey, what are we doing here? What do I do here? And and really, the, if I didn't have the help of everyone kind of giving me the the tools and the information I needed, I wouldn't have been successful. So I really do owe all of that success to everyone else, all of the other management team at Metro. And I want to echo that as well, Don. It's been a pleasure working with you. Your uh, attentiveness. Uh, your friendliness have all been very welcome. I appreciate all your efforts this during this time. So congratulations and uh, enjoy your job. Yeah, thanks so much. <laughs> Director Rotkin. I just wanted to add my uh, praise as well. I, it, I don't know if the public understands how complex an organization the transit district is, but having somebody step in really quickly and take over the whole thing and make it run smoothly, it should not be taken for granted. It was a really wonderful job. Thanks for your work. Thank you. Uh, James Sandoval, I see your hand up. Uh, thank you, Larry. <clears throat> uh, thank you for your report, Don. I just wanted to mention um, in regards to SB 957, uh, the reason why it's moving really quickly from my understanding is because there's a lot of support on it. Um, the latest supporters are from the American Federation of State, from the AFL-CIO, the California Labor Federation, uh, the California Teamsters, um, many other unions, including the Monterey Bay Central Labor Council. And um, and it's just because it's John Laird. I mean, he's uh, one of the best California state senators, so from my understanding, and got a lot of credibility in the legislature. So for him to carry our bill, uh, that's why it's moving forward. And um, as far as I'm concerned, there's been no formal opposition or any opposition on this bill, nothing but support. And I don't know of any managers really opposing this from my understanding, but if there is, I haven't heard of it other than the recommendation at the last board meeting, but I'm just hoping to continue that support because it's really important and vital for us to have some recourse, um, you know, where we could resolve issues. So I just wanted to speak into why it's moving forward so quickly. Thank you, James. And Director Brown. Thank you. I just wanted to jump in to also uh, echo the gratitude for Don and all the work that you've done in stepping into this role and um, keeping the the bus rolling, so to speak. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Um, any further comments? I see no hands or waving from your windows. Uh, but that takes us to the end of this meeting. Announcement World next meeting. Record. Well, I. <laughs> I guess so. Uh, <laughs> Friday, our next meeting is Friday, May 20th at 9 a.m. via teleconference once more. And with that, we're adjourning in only 42 minutes. So. Yeah, I think you should be chair next year too. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, I think great you job. should be chair forever. I, I don't know yeah. about that, Bruce. Uh, I will offer that I'm still trying to find out whether I will be able to communicate from Michigan during our May meeting and uh, do this. I may have to call on Director Jimmy to uh, take my place if I can't get a good connection. But Oh, uh, Jimmy moves pretty quick through the agenda, too, so we're good. <laughs> well, I, I know several other directors who enjoy getting through a, a meeting rapidly. So, Mary, can uh, you come uh, help with my city council with that? No, <laughs> no, please no. No. All right, all. I wish you all a happy Friday. Enjoy Earth Day and the weekend, and we'll meet happy again Earth soon. Day. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Bye, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. You Thank too. you. Bye. Thank you, Dawn. Kristen, call me. Recording stopped.